I would say that MOOCs are part of Open Classrooms. It's a small module, a small component of Open, open Classrooms. But what Open Classrooms is trying to achieve is to build the fully online student experience. So when you go to college on campus, you have access to lectures, that is the equivalent of a MOOC, but also to teachers, to a degree, to a campus with facilities, to a network of alumni, other students and all that. So it's not just about the lectures, the MOOCs, but also about the full student experience leading to a degree and a job. So what we offer on Open Classrooms is programs, degree programs with projects, courses, MOOCs indeed, but not only projects, teams, mentorship uh, leading to a degree and then a job with career services. So I think we try to make Open Classrooms as accessible as we can. Financially, courses are for free. And when it comes to degree programs, it's actually 10 to 20 times cheaper than traditional college education. But also in terms of pedagogy, it has to be very inclusive in the way we teach. So you can learn how to code or you can learn how to become a data scientist or digital marketing, entrepreneurship, even if you don't know anything about it. And we are pretty well known for uh, our pedagogy and the way that students understand what we teach. It seems pretty simple, but I think in the long term, what matters most is the quality of your pedagogy. Excellent question. So we've got two kinds of teachers, teachers and mentors. Teachers are faculties, the one once designing the curriculum, the one in front of the camera, recording videos on the MOOC, writing down the text content, um, designing assessment projects and all the curriculum leading to degrees. So teachers are the pedagogical designers. And then there are mentors. And mentors are another kind of uh, teaching personal mentors are here to coach individually students. Some of our courses have hundreds of thousands of students, one course, so maybe only one teacher designed it, but that teacher couldn't mentor thousands of students, right? So we need to have a network of mentors behind even one course to make sure that we can provide individual mentorship uh, to every individual. So you have teachers designing, designing the curriculum and then mentors coaching individually students on a weekly basis via video conference. Usually they are professionals and they coach roughly six to seven students each. And every student will have roughly an hour of mentorship uh, every week. So it's not a, a full-time job per se, because they are usually professionals. They have a full-time job next to it. And we want to make sure that they have actually a full-time job in that field uh, to make sure they still have the skills uh, to be able to mentor and coach uh, somebody else. Tough question. It really depends if you look over the five next years or the more like 50 next years. Five next years, probably computer science, coding, data science, uh, VR, AR, any digital skills per se will be important. I think in every job position, you'll need to have what we call the basic digital literacy and probably also to learn the basics of coding, for instance. So I would advise that. In the long term, I think it's more about soft skills to learn how to learn. The methodology to be, you know, efficient in the way you learn, to learn in, in a lifelong way, to learn every week, to have the methodology to make sure that you're going to upskill whenever you need to upskill and not just, you know, go to college uh, and then don't learn anything anymore between the age of 24 until the end of your career. You need to learn every week, every month, and we need to teach you how to learn. 
And even if you never went to college, we need you to reskill you and learn how to learn. And other soft skills like collaboration, working in a team, uh, critical thinking, entrepreneurship, I think those skills will be very important in, in the next 10, 20 years. In 2049, I think higher education will definitely be extremely close to vocational training. So vocational training providers will somewhat become higher education institution and the higher education institution will become vocational training providers. So I think the lifelong learning market will be only one. And I think it's getting more global. So I think it's gonna be tough in the next 20, 30 years for very small local colleges that generalist right now. So if you are a local tier two or tier three university, I would say that you need to go up the ladder. So that means go tier one or find your niche, your key expertise, your area of differentiation and stay in that. Because I think local generalists won't make it in, in the next 20 or 30 years as uh, tier one universities will be able to teach uh, many students globally for lower cost and higher quality. So I think education will be more global. It will be more massive. We'll have universities with millions of students and not just taking MOOCs, but really enrolled in degree programs. So you'll see more of that global education, lifelong learning and tighter links and connections with employers and the industry leaders.